aspect of uh, of reality the initial low entropy distribution of mass and energy now <laughs> yes. without getting too technical at this point um this is this is essentially the the idea you were sort of alluding to earlier that at that very earliest moment that singularity uh, of big in big bang cosmology there's an incredible amount of order mm. versus the mm. disorder the entropy that, that appears later on that needs to be there in order for a, a life-sustaining universe to be possible. In fact, you put this extraordinary number on it of um, the precision <laughs> needed to be 1 in 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 123, which I'm told is if you were to try to write that down there and you put a zero on every single particle in the observable universe, it, you still wouldn't have enough zeros. No, on this. close. <laughs> and, and, and so... Yes. <clears throat> this is mind-boggling stuff, but it, it appears you know, it, it appears mm. that as though uh, some some someone as as you know um, uh, who was it who said that someone's been monkeying with the physics um, Hoyle, uh, Hoyle <laughs> uh, Fred Hoyle said it, it looks as though as, as as Bill has said some sort of design is there to to ensure that we we got here now yeah. now what do you, what do you say to that, that uh, idea Well, I'm I'm agnostic i would say on that one you see it's not clear to me i mean people talk about about um well even the mass ratio between the proton and the neutron and the fact that the neutron is just a little bit more massive than the proton and it goes that way rather than the other way around and so on but but it's it's very difficult to since we only know one kind of life you mm. see or one kind of the production of consciousness, it may be very rare throughout the universe. We, I mean, the numbers may not all be that all that all that good. You see, you can imagine fiddling mm. with them so mm. that so that there were consciousnesses all over the place. You see, I don't know. You see, we don't know enough about that. And there are some nice examples from science fiction which show different alter. I like the one Fred Hoyle's idea of the the black cloud, you see, where this was a completely different way of imagining a conscious being, okay. which was this huge cosmic cloud, which uh, communicated like this by electromagnetic signals and things like that. The other story which I like to r refer to is, is one um, by Robert Forward, which was a uh, uh, dragon's egg, I think was the name of the story, where there was a neutron star which came close to the sun. and. Uh, the people on the earth went to explore it and it turned out that there were living beings on this neutron star which instead of using chemistry they use nu nuclear processes mm. and this means that their lives and evolution took place millions of times faster than us mm. and how you can make a story with this complete <laughs> imbalance was an amazing <laughs> achievement I yes. thought but 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 they even had a religion which took place in, in the Chilas which were the inhabitants of this neutron star and when the earth was then came close to them they built their complete religion on, mm. on the star which appeared you see in in the so do, the do you think it's, it's i mean these are obviously stories but do you think yes. it's possible in a sense that some sort of conscious reality could exist uh, even in the absence of the physical sort of well, carbon-based life that we we obviously need for it could have been done very differently in a different totally different you see there are many different parts of the of the universe where the physics is very different from what it is on the earth and maybe a different kind of life could have evolved there and uh, I have no idea right. I just that we don't know there are puzzles right uh, which look like coincidental things and they were one of the first ones was Hoyle's thing mm -hmm. about the uh, energy level of carbon mm -hmm. which hadn't been there <laughs> then then uh, you couldn't have got beyond evolution. Well, Bill, what's your response to the, these sorts of ways of dealing with the fine tuning? Well, this is fascinating to me because as I understand you, Roger, you're not advocating either physical necessity nor chance via the multiverse hypothesis and self-selection effect, uh, nor design, but rather you would simply deny the fact of fine tuning altogether, that the universe is not fine tuned uh, for I think deny conscious. is too strong. I say I don't know. You don't know. Yeah. And um, to me, that is um, highly implausible. Uh, I, it, we just find example after example of fine-tuning in contemporary physics, and it seems to me to be a desperate expedient to deny that it exists. Um, in the absence of 
fine tuning. There wouldn't even be matter. Um, uh, there wouldn't be uh, chemistry. So the idea that I that other forms of life would evolve, I think, is um, logically possible, but it's not, I think, the most plausible solution to the problem. Well, I mean, we just know so little about what constitutes life mm -hmm. and how it... I mean, we, we have the universe we have, and you could imagine cha fiddling with the numbers and making them... To what extent that freedom is even there, mathematically, isn't clear. I, I, I think we just know... I mean, I can see the arguments, and I can see there's a case for the arguments, yeah. to say that, okay, from certain points of view, it looks as though there are accidental things about the constants of nature which have allowed things to happen which if they hadn't happened we wouldn't be here and that's true but maybe some other thing would be here which could mm -hmm. have it's not at all mm. clear to me I, I was wondering whether your the the conformal cyclical model in any way sort of does the job of a multiverse in, in as much as well if the universe has sort of had these rebirths time and time and time again perhaps we're living in the one that was habitable for human life that's a possibility Yes. You see, there could be an evolution of constants. I mean, this was an idea that John Wheeler put forward, not with this yes. model, but with other models, with the sort of bouncing universe models, that maybe each time there was a new set of constants produced and they were different each time, and we happened to be living in the particular eon, if I could use that word here, uh, in which the constants happened to, to see the kind of life, at least, that we, we experience. So, so that's potentially a, a solution. Well, what no, do you think, Bill? That solution seems to me to fall prey to the very argument that you give against using the anthropic principle with respect to the multiverse because what you've done in trying to push the conformal cyclical model to past infinity is in effect establish a multiverse mm -hmm. except it's sequentially ordered rather yeah. than mm -hmm. s oh, simultaneous sure. and no, in that case then the question is yeah. why do we observe a fine-tuned universe like this instead of the one which is unfathomably more probable that is, say, no larger than our solar system, a patch of order that is um, that big. That would be unfathomably more probable than a fine-tuned universe. And indeed, maybe we're all just Boltzmann brains with no, no, no. illusions, one, <laughs> illusions of the external world around yeah. us. Uh, why? Yeah. It, no, look, it, it, it falls prey to this very objection. I don't see why it's No, it's an answer. You see, I'm not giving this answer because I don't okay. like it. Okay. So <laughs> this isn't your favorite. This it's it, not my favorite, but it is a possible right. answer. Right. That the eons are different. That the numbers differ. They yeah. can't differ by very much from observational point of view. Mm. But they, I mean, some of them don't mm. differ by very much. But they could differ and they could yes. evolve. Yes. yes. It's certainly possible. But I, then I don't are... like it, but it's a possibility. <laughs>
This is evidenced by the sheer complexity of life, the intricate balance between all the natural forces, and the fact that the universe is stable enough for life to exist. Our universe is so precise, so exact, that it must have been the work of some kind of intelligence that set the parameters. What's more, the discovery of dark matter in the early 2000s has added more evidence to this argument. Dark matter helps to explain why the universe has the precise structure and composition that it does. This is further evidence that points to the fact that something outside of natural laws had to have been responsible for the universe's creation. Scientists have discovered that there is a definite amount of dark matter present in the universe. This amount is almost identical to the amount of matter required to hold the universe that, in turn, is exactly the same amount required to keep the universe stable. The universe, as we know it, is so precisely balanced that it must have been designed by an intelligent creator. Argue that it must have been chosen with remarkable precision in the face of an infinity of possible arrangements of the universe. Dark matter is not a natural law, it is an unseen force that is outside of the observed laws of physics. If dark matter were not present, then the universe would be much less structured and not as hospitable to life. Dark matter is not affected by normal forces like gravity, so it is a mysterious force that holds the universe together in a way that continues to baffle scientists. This is further evidence that an outside intelligence must have been responsible for the creation of the universe, as this force does not seem to be governed by any natural law. Additionally, the fact that dark matter has been able to remain undetected for so long indicates that it must have been placed in the universe with intentional design. The concept of dark matter and its inexplicable properties present us with further evidence that supports the fine-tuning argument and suggests that the universe was designed by a higher power. In other words, the universe is far too precise to be an accident. Penrose calculates that the probability of a universe like ours existing by chance alone is one part in a 10 to the 10 to the 123rd power an astronomically small probability. This is a difficult number to imagine. To put it into perspective, it is the same odds of randomly guessing the correct number out of 10 to the power of 10 trillion. It is so unlikely to happen by chance that it is almost certain that it was not a chance occurrence, but was, instead, created with intention by an intelligent being. Furthermore, the universe is incredibly stable and continues to exist despite all the chaos that can occur within it. However, this is just one of many instances in which the universe appears to be finely tuned for life. From the size of the universe and the forces that govern it to the composition of the Earth and its orbit, everything has been seemingly set up in a way that is perfectly suited to producing and sustaining life. This indicates that the universe must have been designed by an intelligent creator for this specific purpose. The sheer complexity of the universe and its amazing precision suggest that something outside of natural laws must have played a role in the creation of our universe, and this is supported by the mysterious force of dark matter. Moreover, Craig states that this is evidence of God's existence, and that the argument is logically sound. Craig's argument does not explain why the divine being chose to create a universe with such precise fine-tuning. Why did the Creator create such a universe? What motivated the Creator to create such a complex and beautiful universe? Why would the Creator have gone through such a process? Furthermore, why would the Creator even care about the life that is occurring in the universe? But let's go back to Craig's initial argument. The universe is too complex to have been the result of chance or necessity, therefore it must have been created by a conscious being. Let us grant that chance is an unlikely explanation for the fine-tuning of the universe. But what about necessity? Craig has argued that the concept of a necessary being is problematic because it is not clear what it would mean for the universe to be a necessary being, or how the concept of necessity would apply to the universe. He has also argued that the concept of a necessary being is incompatible with the scientific understanding of the universe, which suggests that the universe had a beginning and is subject to change and evolution. Craig has therefore concluded that the existence of the universe is best explained by either chance or design, rather than necessity. 
He has argued that the probability of the universe having the right conditions for life to emerge and evolve is so low that it is highly unlikely to have occurred by chance, and that the fine-tuning of the universe is therefore best explained by the existence of a conscious, intelligent designer or creator. But with regards to necessity, it is possible that the universe is necessary, in other words, that it is impossible for it not to exist. If this is the case, then the universe did not arise from chance or from a conscious being, but instead that it simply always existed. But how is this possible? Graham Oppy is an Australian philosopher who has written extensively on the philosophy of religion and the arguments for and against the existence of God. Oppy has critically examined the Callum cosmological argument, which is a philosophical argument for the existence of God that is based on the concept of causality and the idea that everything that begins to exist has a cause. Oppy has also argued that the Callum cosmological argument relies on a narrow and simplistic understanding of causality and the nature of reality, and that it fails to consider the complexity and diversity of the physical world. He has therefore concluded that the Callum cosmological argument does not provide a convincing case for the existence of God or any other supernatural being. One of Oppie's main criticisms of the Callum cosmological argument is that it relies on a narrow and simplistic understanding of causality and the nature of reality. Oppie has pointed out that the argument assumes that everything that exists must have a cause, and that this cause must be an external, external cause that exists outside of time and space. However, Oppie has argued that this assumption is not well supported by empirical evidence or logical reasoning, and that it is based on a limited and outdated understanding of causality and the nature of reality. Oppie has also argued that the Callum cosmological argument fails to consider alternative explanations for the existence of the universe, such as the possibility that the universe exists as a necessary being, or a being that must necessarily exist. Api has suggested that the concept of a necessary being is a possible explanation for the existence of a life-permitting universe, and that it is not necessarily incompatible with the scientific understanding of the universe. However, Api has also acknowledged that the concept of a necessary being is problematic and that it is not clear how the concept of necessity would apply to the universe. It is important to note that Oppie's criticisms of the Callum cosmological argument are not universally accepted, and there are other philosophers and theologians who have defended the argument and argued that it provides strong evidence for the existence of God. The question of whether the Callum cosmological argument is a valid and persuasive argument for the existence of God is a complex and contentious one that continues to be debated by scholars in a variety of fields. The concept of multiple universes, or the multiverse, presents an alternative explanation to the fine-tuning argument. This is also the so-called weak anthropic principle which states that our universe is simply the most probable one that could support life out of an infinite number of universes. If this theory is true, then it could be argued that the fine-tuning of the universe is simply a result of probability. In other words, it is simply more probable that a universe that can support life exists than one that cannot. If multiple universes exist, then it is possible that one of them was bound to have the perfect conditions to allow for life, and we just happen to be living in that one. This could explain why the universe appears to be fine-tuned and why there is no explanation as to why a deity chose to create a universe with such precise parameters. While the idea that our universe is the only universe existing is plausible, there is little evidence to support this notion. On the contrary, string theory and other branches of modern physics suggest that the universe may be made up of multiple dimensions and that other universes may exist beyond our own. If this is the case, then it is possible that our universe is only one of many, each with different laws and constants that could support life. This opens up the possibility that our universe was not created with intention, but instead emerged out of a random process, like a lottery. These are questions that many scientists are currently trying to answer. Some theories suggest that multiple universes exist and that ours just happened to be the one that was able to support life. This theory has some merit, as it does provide a plausible explanation for why the universe is so finely tuned for life. However, this does not explain the origin of these universes or why ours has the precise characteristics that it does. 
And while this theory may provide a plausible explanation, it does not completely answer the question of the origin of our universe. It is still possible that a divine being created the many universes and that ours is the one that was able to support life. Ultimately, this is an unresolved mystery that continues to challenge the scientific community. Craig's argument still stands as a compelling argument for the existence of a higher power and his argument should not be discounted lightly. Indeed, Craig's argument brings up question that remains unresolved, why was ours chosen? It is possible that ours is the only universe that exists, and that we simply exist by chance, or it could be that our universe is part of a larger multiverse and that ours was simply the one that happened to have the parameters for life. If we do exist in a multiverse, then we could also ask, why does our multiverse exist? In fact, more important than that, why does a multiverse that allows for the possibility of a life-permitting universe exist? Let's go back to Penrose and Hawking. How did they explain the fine-tuning of the universe? In the late 20th century, their explanation for the fine-tuning of the universe was based on the concept of cosmic inflation. According to this theory, the universe underwent a period of rapid expansion in the moments after the Big Bang. During this expansion, small fluctuations in the density of matter and energy were amplified, resulting in the formation of structures such as galaxies and galaxy clusters. Penrose and Hawking argued that the fine-tuning of the universe could be explained by the fact that these density fluctuations were fine-tuned to produce the structures necessary for the formation of life. In other words, the universe was not fine-tuned for life itself, but for the conditions that made the formation of life possible. This explanation for the fine-tuning of the universe was an attempt to provide a naturalistic explanation for a phenomenon that had previously been explained by appeal to a divine designer. While Penrose and Hawking's theory has not been universally accepted, it has been influential in the development of modern cosmology and has sparked further research into the early evolution of the universe. The idea that the universe was fine-tuned to produce the conditions necessary for life has been extended to other areas of physics and astronomy. For instance, many have argued that the physical constants of the universe must also be fine-tuned in order to allow for the existence of intelligent life. At this point, the jury is still out on how the universe came to be so finely tuned for life, but it does provide an interesting mystery for scientists to explore. This has led to new theories that attempt to explain the origin and evolution of the universe without the need for a divine designer. If these theories are proven true, then it could be the case that the universe is an emergent phenomenon and that our existence is solely a result of chance. This would be a radical rethinking of our place in the universe and could have far-reaching implications for our understanding of life and its purpose. Alternatively, it could be that the universe was in fact designed by a higher power and that we simply exist by its grace. More recently, some scientists have argued that the fine-tuning of the universe could be explained by the so-called anthropic principle. According to this principle, the universe is fine-tuned because we observe it and that our existence is a necessary consequence of the laws of physics. In other words, our universe is the only one capable of supporting life because we are here to observe it. This may sound like an argument from necessity, but it has not been disproven and remains an interesting possibility. Another explanation is that the universe is governed by a set of mathematical laws and that these laws are responsible for its fine-tuning. This is the basis of the view known as mathematical realism, where the universe is seen as a set of equations that govern its behavior. This view has been supported by some of the most respected physicists of our time, such as Stephen Hawking and Roger Penrose. According to this view, the fine-tuning of the universe is a necessary consequence of these laws, and it is not necessary to appeal to a divine designer. Of course, there is also the question of why these mathematical equations exist in the first place. The answer to this question is still unknown. In fact, there is a famous paper on this topic called The Unreasonable Effectiveness of Mathematics in the Natural Sciences by Eugene Wigner. This paper was published in 1963 and has become a classic in the field of physics. In short, it argues that mathematics is surprisingly effective in describing the physical world and that it is far too powerful to be a coincidence. This suggests that, 
In some sense, mathematics is built into the universe, which leads back to the idea of a divine designer. If mathematics is indeed built into the universe, then it might be possible to use it to gain insight into the structure and behavior of the universe. In other words, if we can understand the mathematical laws that govern the universe, then maybe we can learn something about its ultimate origin. Perhaps the conditions necessary for us to exist were simply the result of random fluctuations in the early universe. This would mean that the universe is essentially a random chaos and our life is simply a fortunate accident. This theory, however, does not explain why the universe is so finely tuned for life as it does not account for the fact that life-permitting universes are extremely rare. This is due to the fact that the physical constants of the universe appear to be set in such a way as to allow for the specific conditions necessary for life, such as the existence of carbon, oxygen, and water. As such, it appears that the universe is not an arbitrary and chaotic structure, but instead a finely tuned one. This leads to the conclusion that our life is not just a lucky break, but rather an inevitable outcome of the universe's design. This argument raises the fascinating question of what might have caused the universe to take on this specific structure that allows for life. The probability of a life-permitting universe arising from a random chaos is so small that it defies logic. Therefore, the universe must have had purposeful design. Scientists who are less theologically inclined tend to favor the multiverse theory. In recent years, the idea that we live in a simulation has taken off in popularity. This theory suggests that the universe we live in is merely a simulation in a much larger simulation. This idea is based on the idea that we can simulate anything that can be conceived of by the human mind. This would make the universe a computer simulation that is run by a computer program that is, in turn, run by a programmer that is, in turn, run by a programmer, etc. This would go on ad infinitum. Ultimately, the answer to the question of why there is life, a finite thing, in the universe, always has to do with the infinite. Either it's an infinite God, or it's a multiverse, which is an infinite number of universes, or it's an infinite number of simulated universes. No matter where we look, the abyss of the infinite always stares back at us.